Hello everyone, this is Colin here, or XUDICX, and we are here for the first ever race of the Cobrad Amateur Series on the ASC channel. It's going to be an exciting race here. All these drivers have not been in a group before. We have some PPS regulars, but we also have a ton of rookies. We're going to have to see how these drivers can conquer the 30 lap game of chess. As the car is rolling off. It's going to be an exciting one here today, and let's get your starting lineup. On the pole, AJ Davidson grabbed the pole, and Garrett Sonora, two dodges on the front row. Row two has BK Racing teammates and Conrad Cooper making his return with Zach Mosky. Row three, Dan Klenuk and M Megan Johnson in seven. Row four, Logan Sanders and August Eberhardt. Also, if you notice, there is a copy of the Amateur Jesus Series Chase logo. That's to tell if they are full time or not. Castle Radcliffe and Jake Baskinger make up row 5. Jack, Jack Porkins and Nia Devert make up row 6. Row 7, Kyle Collins and Chloe Baker. Row 8 finds Davey Johnson and Marenta Zrishel. Row 9 has Zach Rain and Cody Smart. Do 4, it's Cody Smart looking to impress Hoffman Motorsports. Row 10, Andre Popov and Nick Vaquez in 33. Row 11 has Julio Caesar and Allison Davidson. Row 12, Aiden Thomas for Richardson Racing and Brian Thompson, Charge by Racing. Nicholas Smudio, driving for Avalon Motorsports and Patrick Curtis, the German. Row 14, John Arnn and Dylan Membrillo race his way in in an awesome qualifying session, as well as Kieran Pangborn and Rick Witt in row 15. Finally, row 16, Tania Brayer and Carson Bowers. That is your starting grid, 30 drivers strong, the biggest field we've seen all speedway weeks. As we see the pace car go off into pit road, and here we go, green flag is out here at Daytona. AJ Davidson off the corner in the lead. Conrad Cooper, though, in that greenish car behind, is coming. Uh, second. Behind him, Dan Klainock. And others falling behind. Like you said, this is a rookie field mostly, so we don't know how many of these drivers are going to behave. Most of these drivers here are making their first ever career start in the ASCA League. But Conrad Cooper, he knows how to drive. Raced in Season 1 in the Pennzoil Cup Series, however dropped out of the series because he couldn't find a ride and Ziploc had left him. And it looks like he's trying to make his way back into the league in the Cop and Amateur Series. Just one of the many reasons why the series is such a good thing to come to the channel. But you see Conrad Cooper going to the week, wasting no time passing the dodge of AJ Davidson. However, that's an upcoming rookie there on the bottom. Jack Porkins has been strong all weekend and really he has been the talk of the garage area just there is a lot of strength in that red stallion race to dodge can't wait to see what that team does in this season baby johnson the custom making toyota is going to the front now and zach rain falling behind all these drivers new names that we may have not heard of before and a pair of, it is so because a lot of these guys like i said are rookies there are very little names that you may recognize only on lap three, but these drivers have like, taken no time to get the three wide action. You see three wide almost all the way back. Retrosicial. The 81 car moving to the bottom. Blue Flare Motorsports is a division of Old Spice Motorsports. They seem to have a tact to find drivers from overseas. Retrosicial, one of those being, not being an exception in that mind right there in the 81 car. We see Nicholas Media driving for Avalon Motorsports, one of the part-time drivers in this field. He'll be sharing that ride along with Cam Gadu and Cole Baker, who will be making his debut in the Pencil Pro Series at Daytona. Race his way in the duel, so we'll see him in the Daytona 500. We see John Arndt, the Zaxby's Chevy in the middle there. Becoming Brian Thompson, John Arndt's teammate. However, John Arndt is not full-time, Brian Thompson is. Nick Vaquez back there in the Bridgestone Toyota. Va Vaquez is actually Jose Vaquez's brother and trying to make his way up and maybe win the rookie year like his brother did in the Pencil Pro Series in the future. However, for now he's running full time 
in his own his own brother's team, actually. JBS Racing. They also have another driver in that team as well. Plus, big toy of David Johnson, like he said, is actually a part of that group and is running full time. Tanya Breyer was unsponsored coming to this race, but got fresh from Florida on the car. You see it right there in the middle. And here in Kangor, fastest in qualifying of the part timers, as he makes his way to the front. He also got Florida, Florida Lottery on that car. So definitely. Oh, movement in the back! And that, yes, that's a car through the grass. It does not look like we're getting a caution. We stay green. I do. I cannot see back there. I believe that was Chloe Baker that went through the grass. But we stay green. That has. That's got. That's got to at least have a huge bit impact. There's more wrecking in the front. And now caution has flown. I thought so. Cody Smart involved. And they're wrecking behind. Plenty of cars. Someone in the air! That was Cody Smart! And Caution is definitely out in a huge one in the back stretch on lap 6. And they could not wait till halfway to get that big one out there. Or maybe at least until Green Flag Pit stops to shuffle the field a bit. It looks like we're looking at Gear Pangborn. He has plenty of damage. I believe he got damage from Cody Smart coming back across the track. Look at that pit road. Look at the look at the cars out of the race stacking up. AJ Davidson, Tania Breyer. I think that's Castle Radcliffe. That's two brick wet racing cars they're seeing on pit road. Disaster on the backstretch. We're gonna go see this little incident first. Watching Jake Baskin turn. I can't exactly see from that angle, but look, they managed to keep it all straight. And Jerry Popov probably got away with the worst damage there, both left and right side damage. I'm gonna get another angle here. Let's see exactly what we can see. Well, I'm not exactly sure, but that's Baskinger's teammate Kyle Collins that he ran into. With the Starbucks toy that looks like he just I mean it kind of looked like he went down or maybe Kyle Collins came up. Nothing more than a race against him, but they did a great job of keeping off each other. However, here's the wreck that really sparked everything. And Looks like JB Johnson will make it through. So nice job of making it through by JB Johnson. However, we gotta see. I didn't really catch who it was. I saw Mariah Sessel and the other Blue Flare Motorsports car. So all three of them are in this wreck. Oh, a, oh, Patrick Curtis wiggled in the middle there. That is what caused it all. The Venom Energy Chevy is what caused that wreck. And just watch the. Oh my gosh, that was Tania Brayer in the back. And there is Cody Smart. That was Zach Rain. Nick Vaquez in the air as well, and look at the junkyard in the back stretch. I was worried about this. None, many of these drivers do not have as much experience as some veterans, and we saw that Patrick Curtis just wiggle in the middle. Probably three wide, four wide was not the best idea to start off the race. This is Zach Rain. Now, you may want to close your eyes because this is just an impact that that we will not forget soon there. Oh, that's his teammate, Dan Klenick. So both of those cars are involved. And look at that wreck. That is incredible. It almost, it launched Cody Smart in the air for at least a second. And I really hope Cody Smart was okay. This is the front bumper of Patrick Curtis, and it looked like he just wiggled and got into his teammate, Tanya Breyer. And, oh, uh, you know, that was... That was Jake Baskin during the 41, so all the cars that saved their cars ended up just making the wreck even bigger. We're gonna see, you can see the cars, oh that was Chloe Baker. Um, oh, there's where AJ Davidson got hit, as well as Logan Sanders in the 83. The Richardson Racing car right there of Aiden Thomas is involved, Brian Thompson, Nicholas Simudio, and I'm sorry to say, we have 14 cars left in this field. Over half the field is retired. This has got to be the biggest catastrophe in the series history. And it happens in the Copyright Embassy Series' first race, its debut. And this is going to be a huge hurting as this, this series does not have as, much as many teams that are really a high profit. So this is going to hurt a lot of small teams that were just trying to run this race. And some of the people that missed the race some of the part-timers at least, I think they might be glad they missed it because that is over half the field wrecked out of the race without a chance of coming back in. 
and plenty more are damaged. As we look in the front here, this is the select few that managed to make it through the wreck. Allison Davidson, one of them. And I'm sure she's happy about that because she won't be racing the Daytona 500. Missed it in the maybe duels. So all the Davidson Motorsport has actually missed it. And I'm sure Allison's trying to give it her all because this is her last race she'll be running this weekend. It was a huge disappointment in the Pennzoil Pro Series, but if Allison, Allison Davidson could get this win here, that would, be, that would just be amazing. However, if I look, Jack Porkins actually is in this field. Like I was saying, Jack Porkins rumored to be the best driver in the garage area, and rightfully so with Red Viper Racing equipment for this Red Stallion Racing team, a division of Red Viper Racing. I'm sure that they are going to definitely perform their best here. HBO coming on board that Dodge. Didn't stay with Chloe Baker despite Chloe actually coming down into the series. Didn't really get to talk much about her, but she was involved in that wreck, so we won't be talking about her today anymore. Here's Andrei Popov, was involved in the wreck, however, managed to make it through the second part of it. Um, involved in the save, actually, but he has a lot of damage on that car. The two car, that team, Webster Zygarde Racing, obviously already off to a bad start since Cesar Chavez didn't even make the race. And Popov running in the back, but really, he's running 14. In the scheme of things, that's not too bad. We're looking at Kieran Pangboy and John aren't right now, both of them are off pace. As well as Garrettson Nord, the other Red Stallion racing car with Culver's on board. So definitely destruction happening early on and I just cannot believe the catastrophe that has happened here. There is barely anyone left in this field. However, Jack Porkins um, definitely leading the way. So the rumors were not wrong about Porkins. He's been out front now for a few laps. And he looks like he is the quickest guy out here. However, I'm not sure if Dylan Mandrillo wants to show, prove him wrong there. Oh, he's not going to be able to do it if Carson Bowers bails from him. So Bowers trying to get on the inside of Dylan Mandrillo. Oh my gosh, is that smoke? No! Jack Porkins is smoking! A little over halfway, and we already have another car with problems. The HBO Dodge looking so strong here. And now, he is going to behind the wall. It sounds like it is an engine problem. No, it's a gearbox. Jack, Jack Porkins is saying the gearbox went. And a complete disappointment in that 99 team. Now, now the, his teammate Garrett Sindor running back in 12 has to be thinking, am I safe too? Or is this it? And just drama on the track. Only 13 drivers remain on the track now. And now this definitely gives everyone else a chance at making the making a um, first place finish here. As we saw in those few laps, it looked like Jack had that all wrapped up. Riding on board Allison Davidson here. One of the only dodges left in the field now after Jack bails. It looks like the 11 car is pushed in the 51, but Alice Davis is going to get underneath Davey Johnson. That's Nia Devon in the front. That driver looking to perform well in this race. And obviously, he's one of the full-time drivers, so we're just going to have to see how that works out. Devon, although, doesn't have much competition, as not many full-time racers actually left in the field. down the back stretch. It's like someone's going to the inside. It's Davey Johnson. And Davey's going to meet back up with Naya. And not on the same team, but obviously the Toyota Alliance is there. They're going to run into Andre Popov now. The Chevy is way off the pace and it looks like the inside line is going to get around pretty easily. However, Naya and Kyle Collins are going to get held up. And the inside line, there are actually a lot of Toyotas still left in this field if you think about it. Um, Davey Johnson, Nia Devray, Kyle Collins, Dylan Mambrilla. However, you also got to look out for that team back there. Julio Caesar and August Eberhard. The Smart Motorsports cars. Cody Smart took a huge hit for Hoffman Motorsports, but you got to keep track of those of his team, though, out there as well. As the, the team owner may be out, but the team's definitely not out at this point. You see a, the group of cars actually fell off since... Andre Popov went through there. Kyle Collins 
Nia Dever, who was leading, and Rick Witt, who has been struggling with speed. I believe he was actually involved in the wreck. But Rick Witt just lucky to be in this race. Almost missed the Penzl Pro Series race in the duels. If you remember, so really Daytona has not been friendly to him all week long. And I'm sure he just can't wait to get on from this race track. Looking at Davey Johnson, he's trying to go after Dylan Mavrilla. Mavrilla was so excited to run this race. And I'm sure he's just as excited to be still out here. With one of the 13 drivers out of the 32 still left running. Allison Davidson looking to make it three wide in the middle. However, if you know Daytona well, the inside line is definitely the place to be. And Johnson is going to remain out front with three to go. This race coming to a close. And I have a feeling someone's jumping inside. Who is it? Yes, he's on the outside, so who is it? on the inside. Looks like Allison Davidson was jumping the inside. But with two laps to go, Allison was moved out of the way, and here come the smart motorsports teammates. August Eber Eberhardt and Julio Caesar. I only talked about them because they were up here in the front, but now look at them. And the field has actually been reduced dramatically. We're going to run into traffic from Garrett to going to 37. Eberhardt getting away, though. And if you remember, August Eberhardt is one of the full-time drivers, so if he can pull off a win here, this would be incredible for him. And in fact, the only other full-time driver is Davey Johnson this front group. Final lap is out in the air, 30-30 complete. Julio Caesar's drafting partner moved up high. Carson Bowers is now coming. With help from Dylan Membrilla, it's a Ford versus Jeff Ford versus Toyota battle. Eberhard out front. Oh no, Johnson gonna bail on Dylan Membrilla. And Toyota's make up second, third, and fourth, but can they get the first? The Zach Camry right on Eberhard. Out of turn four, Andrew Popov in front will not be an issue. Checkered flag, will Carson Bowers make a move? He won't. August Eberhard and the Ford will win the race. And what an incredible race this was. And Eberhard will take the first ever victory in the Copyright Amateur Series in the Ask a League channel. Davey Johnson will finish third in the 11 car. And Eberhard, a well-deserved victory. However, you could almost argue the competition was pretty much removed. Eberhard wins the race with Toyota's finishing second third and sixth. Nia Dever and Kyle Collins seventh and eighth. Allison Davidson not a bad finish for her last race in the Speed Weeks in fifth. However you see only 11 cars finished on the lead lap. Garrett Sidor and Andrew Kokov finished the lap down. And Jack Porkins out with the gearbox. And look at the rest of the field. We don't even need to talk about these guys because all of them out of the race. Here are your point standings. As August Eberhard with 30 is out front. Davey Johnson finished second, Nia Dever third, Garrett Sidor fourth, and Andre Popov fifth, as those are the only cars that actually finished of the full timers. Jack Porkins, you see there in sixth, could have won this race, although it was uncertain whether he would have, but definitely gave it his all. Anyways, that was an amazing race, but we got more ahead of us. Atlanta is up next. Thank you all from the ASCA channel.